Hello everyone, I'm Mini FC and this is Blue Lines TV. And today I'm bringing you a transfer daily video now. I've got a ton of things to cover in this episode today, but to kick things off straight away, I've got some exclusive news regarding Sergio Aguero now. There's been a lot of reports linking us with him, and a lot of people aren't believing it, they think it's bullshit, but I'm here to confirm the reports are real. I've got some exclusive information, and yes, Chelsea have actually sent officials to my source and they're basically looking for um, a London property banker slash advisor who speaks Spanish. Now, of course, my source is saying that, you know, normally clubs have to be pretty confident before they start doing those negotiations. But basically, you know, how it works is, you know, you have to realise footballers like these, they've got a ton of money. And of course, it's hard when, you know, I mean, especially if you've got a transfer in the next couple of weeks, for example, you know, like looking for property, sorting out your finances, etc., etc. Usually that's left to the player liaison officers who do that stuff. And they're the ones that work with the banks because, you know, a lot of these players have a lot of sponsorship deals and a lot of other things. So basically, what clubs like to do, they like to show these players what they can offer. Obviously, you come to Chelsea, you've got your house sorted, your car finances are sorted, you know, your taxes are sorted. We've got this place for you here. We've got that place for you here, etc., etc., etc. Now, um, he's confirmed too that City are open to selling Negrero, but Pep Guardiola isn't happy at all with that. So again, I'm not stating that it's 100% coming. No, this video is just stating that yes, we are officially trying to go after Sergio Aguero. So basically, we have to just you know watch this space, see what happens, and. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very exciting. If, if I'm just gonna, you know, hypothesize, it's using my own logic. I'm thinking, well, we know that Sanchez looks like he's gonna be leaving Arsenal. We've seen previous press reports from him as well. And let's be serious, the guy's, what, 29? No Champions League football. His career's nearly winding down. When you get close to the end of your career, you can't afford to waste a year not competing. And especially not having Champions League football isn't good because you know I don't think Sanchez Sanchez hasn't won the Champions League and actually hasn't won too many trophies in general in his career so there's a possibility maybe, maybe we could go from who knows but you know if you used to use logic he's worked under Pep Guardiola he can play all across the front three and he presses very hard to and it seems to complement Guardiola's system more because we know that Gabriel uh, Jesus he was um in the team more often than Aguero. Um, one of Aguero's biggest weaknesses is his const, you know, it's his work rate. He doesn't press consistently enough. There's certain games where he does, like, you know, the one against Barcelona, but then other games he doesn't do that. And I think Pep Guardiola is getting a bit frustrated by that because the key thing to, to for how his system works is that the pressing needs to start from the first man up front. So if the striker isn't doing that, then of course you can't effectively close down these teams. So there's a possibility that he could go. We've already heard reports back years ago that Agbra was talking favorably about Chelsea anyway. So I think really we should be a bit optimistic. We have to see what happens. Now, Aubameyang. Now, I was not believing any of this at all. And you know why? Because there were no reports from Germany coming out whatsoever stating whether Aubameyang uh, could potentially be leaving. Now, of course, there was stuff coming out in regards to Dortmund saying that um, you know, you have an eight day window to make an offer and seal up the Aubameyang transfer, but not many clubs are going for him. And you know what? It's not because he's not a good player, because he's a world class player, but I think he's kind of unlucky because the clubs in the transfer market this year that need strikers, they're looking for, you know, number nine type of players and Aubameyang isn't a number nine and I mean you could sign him to try and convert him but no I mean really if you were to sign an Aubameyang you'd have to change your approach and your system and unfortunately it looks like most clubs uh, aren't actually in need of that type of striker just yet but again this guy's a fantastic player but kicker have actually uh, broken the story and it came from Borussia Dortmund's director Michael Zork that he's not going. So that's the end. That concludes all this transfer rumors surrounding Aubameyang. Moving on to Matic. Now, yes, Matic, he's trying to force through a move to leave Chelsea. We know that he's been training by himself. He's not very happy. I have been given some information regarding why he's un unhappy. I can't really disclose it too much because I'm, I'm actually quite fortunate since I've started this channel. I've been getting quite a lot of inside information on things happening in Chelsea, 
and a few things happening in other clubs. So of course, like you know, I can't just be so uh, open and reveal every single thing. Otherwise, I miss out on these things and I can't make these videos for you guys. But just to be very brief, Matic was promised a new contract. He wanted a contract. Uh, you know, he wanted a raise in his contracts, and Chelsea denied it. And allegedly, it seems that Bakayoko has got the deal that Matic wanted. And that's one of the main reasons why he wants to leave. And he isn't happy because he's feeling underappreciated and feeling used. But it looks like Juventus want to sign him. And really, I'm just hoping something like this can function where Matic can be playing an instrumental part in bringing in Sandro. Because honestly, if Juventus want him, he's going to cost them at least 35 million. If we could include him in the Sandro deal plus money, we know that they're very close to signing Disclegio. Uh, I just completely butchered the guy's name. They're close to signing him. And I feel that that could ease the burden on Juventus because I'll be getting quite a lot of money still for Sandro and there's still plenty of time to look for replacements. And I'm just hoping that, you know, it's actually quite, you know, it's quite beautiful in a way that you know, he's not going to United, obviously, because they took Lukaku from us. And it looks like hopefully this could work in our favour. Now, I haven't got too much news surrounding Sandra at all. Uh, there's always been bits and pieces or rumours from people telling me this and that. But then there's nothing conclusive. And then usually by the next day, it's debunked. So when I do give information from sources, I don't just say anything to get views or clicks. You know, I'm, I'm very careful because, you know, I, I would like to try and build a reputation where I'm quite reliable. And I know I'll never be 100%, but if I can be in the high 80% percentile, I think that'd be quite good for all of us. Now, moving on to Morata and Danilo, and it looks like Real Madrid want to reduce the fees that they want for both players. And this is because they want to try and bring Kylian Mbappe to the Bernabeu. So they're trying to reduce the fees of these players to keep them moving and get rid of them quickly so they can focus their summer on bringing Mbappe to Real Madrid because they know that it's probably the best time to go for him now where not many clubs are going in for him. You know, if we wait another year, he has potential options. We might not necessarily get him. I mean, they've missed out on deals like Pogba. You know, Pogba was a certainty to go to Real Madrid until Man United completely blew them out of the water. And you can't really trust anything with Premier League, Premier League clubs now because of the money in the Premier League. So Real Madrid want to go for him this summer so they can secure him. Now, um, of course, Danilo has been linked with Man City, but I don't really take too much credence into that because you know, the reason why this guy is leaving Real Madrid is because he wants to play more. And then does he really want to fight his first position again? But at the same time, I don't really think we need Danilo at all. Victor Moses has been great, fantastic, and he's actually getting better and better. And, it, and it's really quite baffling to me how people have decided that Alonso was the better player compared to Moses. And I kind of think that, I think because I've done a lot of match reviews, I think I remember more incidents that happened during games purely because, you know, I've had to speak for them for like 30 minutes or an hour after a game. So it's like locked in my memory more. So I feel like I've got, you know, greater insight into the players. And I think with Moses, this guy, when do you ever see him get beaten on the right hand side? His his partnership with Aspilicueta, how they link up together. When do you ever see that right hand side exposed? I mean, there's a reason why teams don't attack down that side and they focus on the left hand side. And I think with Moses, one thing he needs to improve on is his final ball but at the same time we make it harder at Chelsea because we don't have uh, an aerial presence Costa isn't good in the air so Chelsea uh, players have reduced to playing in first time low driven crosses quite a lot of times because let's be serious you know Costa's the only physical uh, you know and, and player with height in the box so of course you can't be aiming for him because this guy's getting crowded out by opposition defenders but I really think that Moses should continue being number one he's only going to get better had a fantastic debut season and I can't you know I don't, I don't like this idea that uh, I don't know I, I think fans these days we just tend to always think that the grass is greener on the other side I mean Moses drove for a whole year how good he was you know why all of a sudden are we worrying that he can't compete in the Champions League and when people speak about the Champions League all they mean is Barcelona Real Madrid and maybe Juventus and, 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 and Bayern Munich I mean really there's a chance that you might not even play some of those teams anyway but even then the way how we defend together as a team 
you know, when's Moses going to be isolated? I mean, if, if he was going to be isolated, it would have happened already by now during the season, and it hasn't. So I really think this Danilo thing is pretty unnecessary. Morata, you know what? He would actually suit and complement the front three because this guy, you know, he, he's very comfortable playing 20, 30 yards, you know, from the goal with his back to the goal. Plus, he has the legs and the pace and the dribbling to make up that ground. And I think... You know, he suits playing that more deep line forward role that we need. You know, this this is why Costa's really struggled because Costa is a poacher, he's a number nine. He has to face his, uh, you know, he has to face the goal to have a, neat, a real impact. And if you're getting him to do things unfamiliar to his game, you're not getting the best out of Costa. And it's not because Costa's a bad player, no. I mean, you know, with strikers, strikers complement the system. And I think that with how we're playing now and, and how we've evolved as the season's gone on, I don't think Costa's complementing our system as much as he was before. And I think maybe a, a Murata, he is a good player. But at the same time, I really think that if he's gonna, you're going to be spending that much money on him, it's not worth it in my opinion. You know my thoughts, Eden Hazard, I think we should be experimenting with this guy at number 9. I'm going to bring a video out later this week, speaking about the whole thing so you guys can hear my thoughts on that. But continuing on with the transfer dailies, Ike Ugbo has joined Barnsley. I think that's a very good move. I was hoping that this guy was going to leave and not stay with the youth academy for another year. But you know what really baffles me? This, this is what annoys me about how the club does business, because think about it. We just had Christensen on loan at Borussia watching Gladbach for two seasons. Uh, you know, Abraham was at um, was at Bristol City. Why aren't we building relationships with these clubs where they can actually take on another one of our players, and we can actually have something sustainable? Where yo, if a player goes here, you know he's going to have a good chance and that stability to grow. Why why didn't we offer Ugbo to Bristol City? I, I didn't understand that. Why is he going to Barnsley? A completely different system. I mean, we know. That Bristol City used our players. Who knows if Barney's, Barnsley's going to do that? There's always a risk with that, and I don't know what's happening with the, with the club. And I, I really feel the problem they have is that they're not building enough of these relationships. I mean, to think so many players have been on long-term loans. It's other than Vitesse, that's the only club we have where we can have a regular partnership. And I think the club needs to do more to build more bridges with other teams because it's only going to be better for our loan players. You know, they've got a stability which which they need. And uh, I don't know, I don't know. But I think Ugbo is a, a great player. He's great at hold-up play. Uh, you know, he's physically very strong. He's finishing to technique. I mean, we've produced some fantastic players at Chelsea and it's going to be very interesting seeing what he can do in the championship. So that should be a pretty exciting one. And, and, and to be fair, Br Barnsley do have a history of using young strikers. I mean, it wasn't, you know, like two seasons ago, Ashley Fletcher, the guy who's at, was at United and now at West Ham, he was the main striker for them, and, and he was the reason why they uh, got promoted. So, again, it looks like this potentially, maybe the club have done a lot of research and decided, you know what, Barnsley is a good club for Ugbo and his, uh, and his development. Now, um, two more stories to end on. Mukta Ali has officially joined Vitesse on a three-year deal, and good for him. Uh, you know, it's better that he finds somewhere he's got stability and he can actually develop. And I think the Dutch league, the type of player that Mukta Ali is, someone who likes to control the play and play with the ball, playing in a league like the Dutch league where you can, where you have the space and time to play football is better than going to the championship where you're going to have to rely on running and, and, and defensive ability. I mean, not even defensive ability, just running and being aggressive. And I think certain players like that, it's not doesn't really bring the best out of him. And I think that Ali, with the environment he's in, could actually have a very promising career. So he's going to be a player who's going to be very interesting to see his development as the future goes on. And who knows, you know, he could be the greatest East African footballer of all time. I mean, <laughs> and yeah, just to end the story on Remy leaving on a free. I mean, yeah, is it really even news? Not really. To be fair to the guy, injuries has, has been what's ruined him. It's been very unfortunate. He, he had kind of an injury history before. It hasn't really worked out too much for him. You know, we have to remember that season when he first came, this guy was a fantastic number two to Costa. And he was kind of like what Mitchie was last year. Whenever he came on, you knew that he was going to get a goal. And it's, I mean, it's, it's cruel what injuries can do to players. It's something that we don't really think about 
in that in that side of football and you can see why players are always thinking about securing their future because you never know what happens and I mean yeah I mean we've seen with Charlie Masinda now that he, he's just pulled his hamstring he's going to be up for a few weeks which is very frustrating you know he had a chance to show what the guy can do in pre-season it looks like that's going to be delayed and if anything the only silver lining is that Boga now maybe has less competition I mean in a way Conte has already seen Masunda for the best part of half a year he hasn't seen anything of Boga so it's a good way for Boga to show what he can do and I'm sure he's going to take the chance perfectly and, I, and I'm confident that we, well, we, we will be seeing Masunda and Boga in the squad for next year but anyway, you guys, that's going to end the Transfer Daily video. Thank you for watching. I know it's a pretty long one today. But please like, comment and subscribe. Send in your questions to the Snapchat Q&A. Uh, I think it's a, it's a good series. I got a lot more views for the second one. It's great to hear your opinions. There's a lot more questions I'm going to do. I'm going to make the next Snapchat Q&A longer. Because um, there's other questions I need to add in from last week. Because, the, you know, it, it, it got glitched out and uh, I couldn't actually put it in the video which is really annoying but anyway you guys thank you for watching today's transfer daily video i'm the nefc signing out